Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. Today's video is going to be kind of addressing a base, some basic elements that we see in every single web framework. I wanna be hitting up some of these elements that we see in all these frameworks, and I see a lot of people pull in entire frameworks and libraries to do very basic stuff that we can do, and we've lost the art of building some of the basic building blocks of the internet. Things like accordions and tabs and modals and things like that. These are things we see on every single website and yet most people rely on frameworks in order to do it. So I wanna readdress some of this lost art of building some of these elements and show you guys how you can build these yourself. So today, we're gonna to focus on the first one, which is the accordion menu. You can see here, this is the final project that we will be creating today. Um, we have here as many accordion menus as you want. We've got three here. As you hover over it, you can obviously see that when you click it, it opens it up, nice sliding animation. We also have a minimize here and a you can plus, so that gets changed in there as well. And this works really, really good. Um, it fits any type of content. You can put whatever type of HTML content on the in the inside that you want. It works really, really good. You guys are gonna be shocked by how simple it really is. So we're gonna go through this nice and methodical. We'll learn kind of all the steps needed to build this. There are no dependencies. There is no JavaScript framework, no jQuery, no Vue.js, nothing. This is plain raw JavaScript. It's only one little block of code. We're using just plain old CSS, no SAS, stylus, less, nothing none of that. It's very basic, uh, basic HTML. Really bring this back to basics, showing you guys the inner workings of how these common elements come together. Now with all that being said, let's dive into this project and start creating. Now, before we get into this, you may wanna go ahead and download the source code so you can follow along with me. All the, all the source files are on GitHub. You can clone it or download the zip. Um, just go down into the description. There will be a link you can click that will go. There's a big button. You can download a zip right from there. It'll bring it on your computer. There's no NPM install needed, no composer install. You don't need to do anything. The code's ready to go as it comes straight off of GitHub. So when you get it off of GitHub, you're gonna have Basically, inside of your No Frameworks project, you'll have this Accordions folder. The Accordions folder is where everything lives for this project. You're gonna to wanna to start in the Start folder. We have the three files here we'll be working with. This way you can start with the same files I'm starting with. If at any point you wanna see how it finishes, the final folder will show all the final code that is needed for the project, okay? So you can see all of the code here. There's some sneak peeks for any of you guys that are interested. And of course, you don't wanna to listen to me, you could just skip over and look at the code. So the do what you gotta do. All right, so now if we go ahead and take it the code here, you can see inside of our index.html, we have a very basic HTML template, um, just a title, the basic you know, core necessity meta tags. We have a link to our styles.css uh, CSS file, and then our JavaScript is down here at the bottom, scripts.js. Again, using no dependencies or frameworks. So this is plain CSS, plain JavaScript. And then inside of our HTML, the only content we have really, we created a container and then just a, head, a headline, a H1, okay? Now I didn't style the heading, but I did style, if we look at our styles.css here, I did style the container just a little bit to make it look good here on this smaller screen. Normally your max width would probably be higher, but I wanted to do it so it looked good in this little window up above me. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's start working on this. So we need to start by actually creating the accordion. So what we're gonna be doing here is inside of our content, we'll create those accordion menus. And the accordion menus, as you saw in the preview, are we're basically gonna start by creating a block. So we have that core block that you click and unclick that is going to be like a big button that we press and that's gonna be the heading for the accordion. So that's the first element we need to create. The second element is going to be the content that slides in and out. That's gonna be like the accordion content. So let's create those two elements. We'll just be using some, uh, we're gonna start by creating a button so that it handles well with JavaScript. Let's give it a class of, again, whatever you wanna call it, but I like accordion. And then we'll close it out and we can go ahead and put the content inside of here. So let's go ahead and give it accordion. I'm just gonna say accordion number one, just for the examples here that we're working with. And then let's create that box that slides in and out. So that is basically like the content, the panel is sometimes what that's called. Let's create a div for that. 
So we're gonna just call this accordion-panel or accordion-content. I, I actually, let's do panel, let's do panel. Or no, let's do content. Okay, so we're gonna call this accordion content. And then this is just the wrapper for what we decide to display or hide. I like to keep it minimal because we don't wanna style any of the inner content. We wanna leave that up to the actual HTML we put inside of it. So this allows us to put lists, paragraphs, columns, whatever we want. Any HTML can go inside of this because it's just a normal HTML element. The only styling we're gonna do to this content wrapper is showing and hiding it as it gets clicked. Um, all the rest of the styling as far as how everything is displayed is up to the actual HTML inside of it, okay? So that's kind of one of the important things to have. Now, for us, let's create some content so we can see if it's open or closed. Um, we're just gonna be working with paragraphs today. So we'll just grab a paragraph tag, but again, you could put anything you wanted inside of here. So we're gonna just do some lorem ipsum, and that's it. That's our accordion, guys. So we've got our button at the top, that's our heading, our headline, our button. Then we have got our content wrapper here, and that's it. So from here to here, is an accordion and now we can just duplicate that however however much we want so let's go ahead and just grab it actually and i'm just going to copy and make a couple of these so let's just create a couple of these and let's create different size content so let's create um just so we can kind of work with different size content create three paragraphs on this one we'll just do one paragraph on this one let's do two paragraphs on this bottom one just so that we can work with the different size content. All right, that's it for the HTML, guys. Super simple. Again, don't need to pull in a framework for this. It's really basic. Let's uh, go over to the styles.css and take a look at it. In fact, actually, what I should do is show you guys what it looks like in the browser. So over here, you can see that with the HTML, we just have our content in here. We can't see the wrapper technically because there's not any styling for it yet, but there is a wrapper around it. And then we've got our button for each accordion. So as we scroll down, that's what it looks like. So there's no styles, we need to style it. So let's do that. The first thing let's style is this button. We wanna create a full width element. So let's start by doing that. So we're gonna grab our accordion, uh, we're gonna style the accordion, and let's actually just make it explicit. We're gonna grab the buttons with the, the class of accordion, and then let's give it a width of 100%, a background color of, um, I like to use white smoke. And then from there, let's go through and well, we can take a look at that, see what it looks like. There we go. Now it still has some stylings from the buttons. You have this border around the edges. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We're say border none, outline none. There we go, it's looking better. And then uh, let's go ahead and take this text, let's center it to the left. You can obviously keep it centered if you wanted, but um, I think it's gonna look better to the left. And then from there, we can, um, let's give it some padding. So here you can see it's, let's make this uh, this bar just a little bigger. Let's give it some breathing room to the top and the bottom and to the sides. So we're gonna be using some padding. We wanna use padding, not margin, because padding extends the background color. Margin does not. So padding, let's do 15 pixels top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right, just like that. And let's go ahead and make this text just a little bigger so it feels like a headline. We'll grab font size, make it 18 pixels, and there we go. So I think that looks pretty good. That's a really good basic for the accordion. Now we can go through and let's give this an effect. You can see right now that as we work with this, the cursor doesn't really indicate that there's something to click on. So let's make this clickable. Um, we need to change this cursor so when we're hovering over it, it has you know your traditional like a link would have. So let's grab the uh, cursor. Uh, CSS element, give it the pointer class. This way it looks like um, an actual element. So as we hover over it, we get that effect. And I think it also makes sense to have that background color. Let's give it a background color when you hover over it as well. So in order to do that, we're going to once again grab accordion and this say, time say hover, and we hover over it, just give it a different background color. Okay, so now when I hover over it, you can see we get that effect. It's a little bit harsh, so we add a transition. Let's make it a, um, we'll say background color, and then um, let's give it a 0.3 second transition, and we'll say uh, linear. 
Let's grab that once again. There we go, it's looking a, a lot better. Maybe just make that transition a little smaller. There we go, so it's a little faster. There we go, so I think our heading is good. Let's go through and style this panel real quick. Basically, we need to move this panel in so it matches the padding that this uh, top has, so it really feels like it belongs. And then I like to have a little bit of a border on the edges just to give it some containment, but that's up to you, you don't need that. So let's grab this and we're gonna say accordion content and this time we'll give it a padding of uh, zero pixels in the top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right just to match this one up here. And then um, let's go ahead and give it that border. So we'll say uh, border left one pixel solid white smoke just to match the uh, heading. And then we'll do the same thing there for border right one pixel solid white smoke there we go so now it's starting to really look like it belongs and that's basically it for the styling okay so i think we're basically good on the styling so now the next thing to look at is how we're going to control that effect where it slides up and down so in order to do that basically what we're going to want to do is control the height of the element now we don't want to adjust the height directly because the height by default is gonna be dynamic to whatever it needs to fill the content. So you can see the height for this element is bigger than the height for this element and for this element, you know, and this one's bigger than that one and so forth. It The height is dynamic to whatever the content requires. So we wanna keep that element. So let's go ahead and keep that, but let's um, change the max height. So the max height basically, it gives it a ceiling on what you can do. If we set that max height to zero, you're not gonna see anything, right? It's gonna be zero. But then it, with JavaScript, we can remove that max height, we can set it equal to what is required to, vis to see everything, and that'll make it all visible. So that's kind of the goal. So again, inside of our accordion content, let's go ahead and override that max height, and let's give the max height zero. And that should hide everything. Okay, so we're still having a little bit of a problem because of the content. So. The content, we want it to tell it that if the content, um, we don't need to see the content when this thing is closed, right? So we can tell it to overflow hidden so that we don't see that content. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll say overflow hidden. And there we go. Now that we make it all hidden, now they can actually close up. Let's give these different numbers too. So back over here, um, accordion one, accordion two, and accordion three. There we go. All right, back to our styles. So I think we're good with our styles. So we have all this and now we just need to make it so when we click, they open up or close. So back over to our JavaScripts, let's start working with these. The first thing we wanna do is, or our main goal actually, is basically just to create a click event for each element, each accordion that we have. Of course, we don't know how many accordions are gonna exist, so we're gonna to wanna to do something dynamic here. We're gonna to wanna to loop through them all and set a dynamic number of uh, click events for every single accordion on the screen. So the first step in doing that is to go ahead and grab all of the accordions. So um, let's create a variable called accordions, and then let's go ahead and get all of the accordions by their class name. So they all have, um, let's do document dot um, get elements by class name, and then we'll just grab accordion. And so that'll give us an array with all of the accordions inside of it. So um, the first element in the array would be the first accordion on the screen, the second one will be the second one and so forth. So then we can just loop through them and create a click event for each one. So it's pretty simple, oops. Down here, oops, I'm all over the place. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a for loop. You can see we've got our, we create a variable i. We need to create, um, we need to check the length of this accordions array. So let's go ahead and call that accordions dot length and then we increment by i. So now we can go through and grab the current accordion by its key and then let's say um, on click and create an anonymous function, okay? So here we go. And now we can tell it what to do when we click on that, when that click event occurs. So we've got a click event for each of these now. All right, so what do we wanna do? So let's start by just basically grabbing that the uh, let's navigate the Dom and let's grab the child element the accordion content so the way that we would do that of course let's go ahead and save that so we'll say 
um, content equals. And then let's go through and say this because this represents the current accordion we're working with. We'll say this dot next element sibling. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna go down the DOM one element. So we have our button. We're gonna go down one button. Here we got this button. We're gonna say the next sibling, which would be this item here. And no matter which one we're on, the next item is always the accordion content. So we can be safe knowing that that's the content. And now that we have the content, we can create a basic if statement here. And what we wanna check is the current value of the max height because the max height indicates whether it's open or closed. If that max height is set to zero, we know it's closed. If it's set to something more than zero, then we know it is open. Depending on whether it's open or closed tells us what we're gonna do, whether we're gonna close it or open it. So let's go ahead and grab that content. We can grab the styles of that content and then we can grab the max height property. So the reason we can just do this is because if max height is set to zero, then it will come back null or falsy. So if we just check height, it's gonna return an integer if it's set to more than zero or if it's set to zero, it'll be false. So, or a faulty value at least. So we can just check it here and if it, we enter this if statement, we know that the accordion, so here we know the accordion is open, we need to close it. And then if we open an else statement, we know the opposite, right? So the accordion is closed. All right, so if the accordion is open, let's go ahead and close it. So the way that we can close it is pretty easy. We basically just grab that max height property and we can just set it to null or zero. And this is gonna shoot that straight back up, back to the way it is basically when this starts, which is the closed state. So when it's open, or sorry, when the accordion is closed, however, now we need to take that max height, which is set to zero, and make it whatever height is necessary for the content to fit in the screen. Now the way that we can do this, so let's grab real quick, content.style.maxHeight. Now you could hard code this, obviously, 100 pixels or something like that, but that's not going to work because the content can be, we don't know how big the content's gonna be. So we have to do this a little bit more dynamically. So the way that we're going to do this is we're gonna grab content.scrollHeight. All right, like that. Now what this is going to do is it's going to basically get the total value of all of the content that's inside of it, all right? Um, so if you imagine like a web page, your browser might only be like 800 pixels tall. The website might be like a thousand pixels tall. That's the scroll height, is the entire size of the website, not just the part that's visible. That's what we're getting here. So this is gonna return us a integer with however many pixels the content requires. Now, of course, to set this property, we have to add like an actual, a PX to the end, so it comes in as a pixel property. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just say, um, we'll concatenate PX onto the back, so it comes in as that. And that's it. So now let's go test that in the browser. So now over here, if we go ahead and click it, you can see it opens up. We click this one, it opens up. We click it again, it closes, and so forth. So it's working and it looks great. So um, it works perfect. We basically check to see whether it's open or closed by seeing the value of max height. If there's a value for max height, then we know it's open. So we set it to zero to close it. If there's no value, then we're going to go ahead and set it to whatever height value is needed for the whole content to be filled in there. It's that simple. So there you go. You guys have the start of an accordion without any sort of framework required. Let's add a couple more things to make this a little bit nicer. First of all, let's make this animated. To animate this opening is pretty darn easy because um, we're just basically changing the height property. So what we can do is under this accordion content, we can actually just tell it to give it a transition. So as it transitions from zero to whatever is needed to open it, it'll basically do that as a transition. So it's pretty easy with uh, CSS3. So you just do transition. And from here, we're gonna say, we're gonna transition the max height value for however long we want. I would probably make it match this one up here. So we'll just do two sec 0.2 seconds, 200 milliseconds. And then you can do any sort of easing in you want, like ease in, out is probably good. And now if we come over here and do this, when we click it, you can see it scrolls, right? So now we get that nice, smooth look by just adding that transition. Okay, pretty easy, pretty good stuff. 
Now let's go ahead and add that plus or minus icon onto the side. So to add the plus or minus icon, um, we're gonna pull in Font Awesome, the ever popular font library. Um, let's go to our HTML here and above our CSS, cause we need it to be um, imported before we use our CSS. Let's go ahead and add the style sheet for that. So you can find this in the final folder. If you just go over to the final folder, um, inside of HTML, you'll find that here. Just copy this one to get the CDN for um, Font Awesome. So you know that we don't need to download it or anything like that. Okay, so now we've got access to the Font Awesome library from uh, this cdnjs.cloudflare.com. And so from here, we can now use our style sheets to add those pluses and minuses onto the side. So inside of here, we're gonna use the pseudo element um, let's go ahead and do it up. It doesn't matter, but I just want to keep it organized. So button dot accordion. We're going to use this after pseudo element here. And um, we're going to dynamically add that plus or that minus. So what you do is you're going to grab the content. We'll come, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, we're going to basically give it that symbol, that plus symbol or that minus symbol. We're going to tell it the font uh, family is font awesome. And then we're going to give it a font size of like 14, 15 pixels, something like that. And um, I think that should basically do it. Oh, we're probably gonna need to float it. So let's float it to the uh, right. So it goes all the way over to the edge. There we go, so that's basically it. Now we do need to tell it what kind of content to put in. We need to tell it which icon to insert. So in order to do that, let's go over to the Font Awesome website. So here we go, from the Font Awesome website, you can see that we've got, um, um, let's look at the icons here. Let's grab a plus icon. And you can see that we've got like a plus circle would be good, so let's click that. You can see there's a Unicode character, which is what we need inside of that content. So let's grab that Unicode character. And inside of content here, let's paste in that Unicode character. Let's put a backslash before it so that um, it works and then go ahead and save that. And this should now give us the plus icon next to all of them. So it, it looks good, it looks good. Now the only thing different is when we open it, we want this to change to a minus. Now how do we add that minus sign? So how do we change it from a plus to a minus? Well, obviously you could dynamically insert that through um, JavaScript, but we're gonna do something more effective anyway. This is the way it's normally done. And that's by adding inside of our index.html, inside of the HTML for our um, accordion, you often see these things which indicate whether to the parent element, whether its content is currently being displayed or not. So you generally see classes appended on here like is open or just open or active or something like that. So we're gonna add a class like that. We're gonna toggle this on and off on the parent element so it knows whether it's open or closed. And that's gonna allow us to dynamically style it in the CSS. So I personally like to use the is open because that is a little bit, that falls kind of the BLM CSS styling, but it's up to you guys. Um, but I'm gonna use this is open as the class I'm gonna use to represent it. So what we're gonna do now is inside of our JavaScript, we're going to tell it to toggle that is open class onto the parent element whenever, before we scroll everything up and down. So that way it always knows whether it's open or closed because it'll have that class. So to do this, it's actually surprisingly simple. Um, we're going to be working with the actual accordion, the current accordion, so we can access it with just the this property. And then from here, we can actually just grab the class list and then toggle that is open class, all right? And then what that's going to do, if we go over here and inspect the element, um, we look at the content real quick, if you watch this accordion now, this first accordion, it just has a class of accordion. When we click it, it says accordion is open, all right? And when we close it, that accordion, that goes away. So we've already got the functionality there. Now we can just style it however we want. So over here, what we can do is we have button after. Let's go through and do button.accordion.isOpen to indicate that it also has that is open class. Let's grab the after for that. And now we're going to change that content to indicate the minus sign. So the minus sign, if we come back over and we type minus, minus circle, um, this zero or F056 is the minus sign. Let's go ahead and put it in there. 
add that backslash. And that's actually all we need. We're just changing the content. Everything else can stay the same because it's all inherited um, because it's CSS. Okay, so now we can come over here, refresh, click it, and you can see that that, that item takes over um, because that is open class is added and removed. Now, another thing you can do that I like personally is you can change the background based on that is open class as well so that this is always darker to indicate that it's the open one. So to do that, once again, um, here for button dot accordion hover, let's go ahead and tell it also on button dot accordion dot is open. So even if we're not hovering over it, if it's got the is open class, we want that background color. Refresh, and now you can see even if I hover away from it, it stays darker. We have that minus sign. You could add whatever styling you wanted now with that is open class, okay? So that basically sums up today's video. You have those accordions, they are working. We used no frameworks or bat or um, anything. We used raw CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Easy stuff, and you can see when you look at this, there really isn't much to it. Like, there really is not. Um, and this works really, really well. So there you guys go. We have created our accordion menu. This is a basic accordion menu that you could customize however you want. No dependencies, no frameworks, nothing. Just super easy to use. So it has the um, icon in there. You could change that if you wanted. And it slides up and down. It's nice and animated. It looks really, really good. Of course, the exact styling of what's inside of here and the actual look of the accordion is just as simple as customizing the CSS. So you guys know the CSS It's inside of here. You could um, do whatever you wanted with this because it just uses the basic CSS. So now you can customize it and make it look exactly like how you want it. Adding this to your page is as simple as doing something like this. So, and adding this HTML. And then the JavaScript is actually quite simple as well. It's basically one block of code. So this saves a lot of work over importing a library just to do something as simple as an accordion. So I encourage you to see if you can add some of these to your projects. You don't need to pull in Bootstrap. You don't always need to pull in some of these big frameworks to add simple functionality like this. This is something you can really do yourself. So I encourage you guys to get out there and try to do it.